Just what the sweet scented heck did you do to my thug? I beg your pardon. He won't do a ding dang dad burn dog on thing I tell him to. Oh yeah, your farmer receptionist was a big fan of intrigue chocolate. I found his stash. I find just one candied orange wedge dipped in chocolate gets me a whole hour of good behavior from Buck. The hops and clover honey bar bought me four whole days. Hated to give it up though. 70% dark chocolate, fragrant hops, local honey. <laughs> I had limp for lunch. Wasn't even good limp. Tell you what, I tucked away a bag of vanilla dark, 60% original chocolate, minimally processed. Tastes like marshmallows and lemon. You promised not to shout for 24 hours, and it's yours. Lady, you have just made yourself a deal. Good. No, Mrs. Sheffield has escaped. With your car. Oh, see, no, that shade of purple just isn't healthy. Here, have a piece now. That'll help. Tame your savage beast with delicious intrigue chocolate. That's I-N-T-R-I-G-U-E chocolate.com. Get a 10% discount until November 1st, 2020, when you type OZ9 at checkout. U.S. orders only. It's steering the ship. The uh, plant is steering the ship. Yep. You already said that. Dramatic emphasis. So do we know what planet they came from? And how long it'll take us to get there? Also, and I really do not want to ask this, are they the reason so many pods are going dark? They, no. But that bad one? Is it true, Azel? Yes, probably. So, basically, we've been flipping their juice boxes out the airlock. My god! Just when I thought this conversation couldn't get worse. How many others are there? Mrs. Sheffield? Oh, they're gone, I'm afraid. Greg's kidney's disconnected. You could just say they hung up. Where's the fun in that? I think it's safe to say they didn't have time to count, Colin. But it's a good question. If they're active again after all these years, they must think they're ready for whatever comes next. Hmm? Oh, 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 yes, I'm, I'm here, I'm here. Ah, I just didn't want to interrupt a dramatic moment. Sometimes you have to let a moment just hang in the air like smoke. Deep, rich, velvety, smoky, smoke. <clears throat> Sorry. Oh, okay. So, uh, there were quite a lot of revelations in the last episode. Or at least some very spooky guessing going on. Are the others terraforming us when we thought we were terraforming them? And are the pods full of rich folks just go-gurts for the others as they make their way back to Earth? We've heard we're not alone in the vast expanse of space, so if there's anyone competent out there who can intercept, could you maybe broadside the Oz-9 and lend a hand? So how far is it to their home planet? And what happens to us when we get there? I'm going to need a much bigger pen. We were never able to glean from them where their planet is. So many communication issues, you have no idea. It's actually not that hard to understand them if you take swatches with you. Late. Uh, shut up. Thank you. Do you at least have a guess, Doctor? Nine. Nine guesses? Well, that narrows it down some. My God. When I thought communicating with the aliens was a hard part. I'll explain it to you later. I can give you a general idea which direction we're heading in when the plant is in control. Doctor Theo. Did you not say the mold could kill the bad plants? Perhaps. We should arrange a meeting, huh? Yes, the mold does attack the hostile plants, but I doubt that's ever been tested on one of the others. That plant is ancient and likely much more powerful than its genetically manipulated descendants. Did you know red is universally the color of rage? And I mean universally, like the whole universe universally? Did anyone say your name? No fair. You just told me to shut up. You didn't jinx me. I used to like the color red, but now it always seems like it's shouting at me. Quick question. How often do they need to eat? I mean, if they brought aboard a certain number of pods, and we whipped a lot of those pods, what happens if they run out? Not that I want them to eat any of the passengers, of course. But, well, 
I can assassinate them. No, you can't. But congratulations on getting all of the syllables in that word for a change. I'm guessing kudzu bread with cattail marmalade isn't going to hold them over until landfall. We need to fix my popcorn machine. Really? It's invasion of the body snackers. You want to give them popcorn or one of us? <laughs> Whom are you offering? I'm trying to captain here. The two on the right talk mostly in greens, which I guess makes sense. Them being plants and all. Lots of browns, too. Also sunlight. Leet? Sorry. No, no, wait. What do you mean they talk in greens? I don't know a better way to explain it. Do you talk back to them? Oh, come on. You're seriously thinking we should stand around gabbing at ferns, do ya? There's got to be a hatchet around here. Let's just go take care of the big baddies right now. If we can't flip them, well, we've got a compost room. Hang on. <laughs> no. Hang on. Metaphorically. All right. Sorry. <clears throat> Leet, can you make yourself understood to them? No, I don't know how to do what they do. I can understand the good plants better. It's hard to figure out what the other one is saying. It's kind of like in the movies when someone's all ye old shabby and hither and cod pieces and stuff. I get some of it, but then it says something weird and they all laugh, but I don't get it. I think it's usually about pollination. Uh, they talk a lot about pollination. You're saying you can actually talk to these alien plant things? It's not really talking like we're doing. It's more like decoding their passwords. They shoot colors and smells at me, and I try and figure out what they mean. Smells? Can you explain? Also, what are you doing to my head? I'm tucking your hair behind your ear. <laughs> my hair doesn't tuck. That's okay. Smells. Green smells? Yeah. You smelled them too? Yes. I thought it was the result of sandwiches. The result of... Oh. Ew! Uh, <laughs> of course. Your sense of smell is heightened thanks to the olive, eh? Yes. And on a ship full of rancid food, and frankly a pretty rancid crew, that is not a benefit. Can you make any sense of what you're smelling? Don't be absurd. It just smells green. Or brown. Whatever. What, like pine trees and bogs? And before you say it, not that kind of bog. The kind with peat. Who's Pete? What? I'll explain that to her later as well. No, they don't smell like anything familiar. It's just the scent of green. Greeliness. And sulfur, which is the scent of hell itself. My God. You know you're not making any sense here, right? He is, though. Hmm. We need to separate them. The two benign... <sighs> benevolent ones from the hostile one. Separate bollocks! We need to kill them! No, at least not the good ones. Are you 100% positive that two of them are good? I'm... 79? Uh, no, 83. 83% positive. That's still 35% not, Lee. 35? And she's your cotton. Let that sink in for a whole second. I'd rather not. We're not killing anything, Lee. But we need to do some research. Can you think of anything that smells like their smells? Something we can use to communicate? There's lots of green and brown stuff in the bioswamp. Maybe we can mix something up. I don't know. There. Smell that? That's them. I don't smell anything. Well, not anything new. Nope. Not. Wait, you smell it clear up here on the bridge? Are they moving? I don't think so. I think it's coming from... Colin. What? You're mad. You are saying our Colin can reproduce the smells of the plants? Ah, this, this is very good news indeed. So, you're a good guy now, right? I have always been, my friend Leet. Debatable. While on the ship, I have been a good fellow. That is what I am saying. Slightly more accurate. Hello. If Colin can produce their language, I, I guess... Can you tell what he's saying, Lee? Eat me. I beg your pardon. That's what Colin's saying. I most certainly am not. Sorry, but you are. My God. Keep me away from those plants. What are you feeling right now? We need to figure out how you trigger certain scents so you can speak back to them. What am I feeling? 
Apparently, I've been wandering around shouting, I'm tasty, come and get me, to homicidal plants. I'm terrified. Believe me. I understand accidentally communicating the wrong message. The trick is figuring out how to send the right one. <laughs> Oi! Get back here, Lenny! Isn't that the poison frog? Why do you still have it? Lenny is not an it. She's a she. Probably. Doesn't matter. I've taken a lake into her and she is quite happy in my pocket, so you leave her be. Well, get Lenny off me this instant! <laughs> Hang on. That gives me an idea. This is the bit where they all huddle up and you don't get to hear what they're planning because it'll ruin the surprise or something. Or possibly the writer doesn't really know the plan yet and is stalling for time. <sighs> Either way, we'll take the opportunity to check in with the crew on Earth who had narrowly escaped from the others the last time we checked in. Why do they keep hanging up on us? Ben, honey, they're in space. There's a lot of stuff between them and us. Like, space is, is, is inconvenient. Oh, I don't know about you lot, but I'm concerned we're a touch exposed out here. Not in a good way. We could head for the rough where I've been living. They think we're dead, so they won't be looking for us. If it's all the same to you, I am feeling a little Emily and Howard-ish. Meaning? Light on arms. Get it? <laughs> oh, oh. Oh. Holes about we swing back to Louisville. I clocked a couple of pawn shops as we went past. Oh, that's at least an hour, an hour and a half drive. We'll have to take the golf cart. <laughs> no. Please. I've risked my life enough times today. We can't stay here. It's good they think we're dead. If they spot us, they'll finish the job. What are you holding? Oh, samples. Those are from the others. When were you close enough to get clippings? Does it matter? Yes! I have a theory about how they communicate, and I need living samples to study. I've got to get these in some water. Fine. They've got water in Louisville. One of you can hotwire a real car, right? Donna? Surely you did that between cow tipping and ice fishing and eating pancakes or whatever? Regular water won't do. This is from one of the original travelers, remember? I need sulfur water. I have to get to the springs. Pluto Springs is just over there. Come on. <laughs> We're running. Running. And trying not to die. Yes. Isn't it fun? Come along. Run. Hurry up, Ben! While they're hastening to the springs, let me give you an idea of the surroundings. French Lick is the site of a very old and very elegant resort where the wealthy and powerful once came to take the waters. Famous for their speedy uh, laxative effects, the springs were popular among people who could afford the sort of diet that made laxatives necessary. Toilets were installed quite near the springs so that those who imbibed weren't embarrassed. It's a bit ironic that our group is running towards the springs. Ooh. You sure it's a good idea to make more of those beasties? I worked with their descendant, remember? I'll keep it small, and when I'm done with it, I'll destroy it. Oh, they're pretty much indestructible, according to those notes. Oh, I've got it under control. Yes, you uh... You do have the mold, don't you? Hmm? Yes. It's in the back of your car. So, I hope Linda's still got your car, or we will be in trouble. Okay? Here we are. <sighs> what, what the hell is that? Oh, yeah. That's supposed to be Pluto, the Roman god of the dead. That statue has been around forever, apparently. <sighs> Oh, that's what Olivia meant when she said we were going to the home of the devil himself. Maybe. <gasps> you! If she did, she had it wrong. Oh, you devil. 
The real devil here is the fellow that runs this place. What happened to you? I was trying to help Gertie. I should have known when they hustled your botanist gal out with the rest of you, they didn't care about my Gertie. While I was tending her, the devil locked me in the green nails. It was feeding time. <laughs> I barely made it out alive. Hmm. Your shoes sure are shiny. Really, Donna? I've been sitting here shining them since I escaped. That's how I made my first dollar, you know, shining the rich man's shoes. So I sat here and polished my shoes and wondered where the hell it all went wrong. Liberals. Oh, yes. Well, I'll feel sorry for you. Just the far side of never. But for now, let's just figure out what to do with the devil in the bright sunlight. Mm? Hey, I need something to keep the water in. Anyone got anything? Here, use my flask. I finished up the whiskey setting fire to the greenhouse. This is your flask? How much does this thing hold? Where I come from, a lady never asks the size of a man's flask. Watch it, Southers. Stepping out of bounds ever since you got the boat. Could we maybe get to the springs and get out of sight? Oh, what if Charlie's prowling around? It's a pagoda, Ben. How out of sight were you hoping to be? Just go fill your giant flask and let's get out of here. So, um, am I right in assuming your loyalties have shifted somewhat? Well, not half the distance of a butterfly fart, as my granddaddy used to say. My loyalties have been and will always be to me. Oh, well, so there's let me rephrase for you, shall I? Am I right in assuming your bread is now buttered on the other side? Hmm? I, I don't know if it's your accent or your bizarro limey slang, but I have no idea what you're saying. Your accent is over the top. Oh, but deciphering the butterfly fart was a doddle. Hmm? Tit. <sighs> Last go. Um, <clears throat> listen, Southers, you might be willing to be on our side now rather than theirs, since they tried to kill you more recently than we did. Capish? Surely. I will, of course, uh, jump ship at the first sign of a turning tide, however. Duly noted. Tit. Okay, I've got the water. Nice seal on this flask, I have to say. Nothing's getting out of there. Little Missy, the last liquid that was in that flask was a 25-year-old scotch retailing at $2,500 a bottle. And that's only because I couldn't get the good stuff out here in exactly nowhere, Indiana. My God. This entire town share a toothbrush? Where's Buck? I dropped him off in Terre Haute. Said he had an appointment at the zoo. Oh, um, you weren't fond of him, were you? Is a cat fond of its scratching post? Is a dog fond of its chew toy? Is a kangaroo fond yes, of... Yes, yes, right, I get the point. Hang, hang on, uh, what was that last one again? My point is Buck is strictly a utilitarian accessory. Well, yes, yes, I understand, but, but what is the kangaroo equivalent of a chew toy? Hey, 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 you have a car. Here. Quick, ain't he? Ah, oh, finally, we shall see your car on the inside. <laughs> uh, it's easier to enjoy the in-dash digital media system when it's not accompanied by the sounds of your companions screaming over it. <laughs> Shall we? Age before beauty? This is not how I expected this day to go. Hmm. I suspect not. Now, let's chat about that devil, Mr. Tiberius. Tiberius? <laughs> Hell no! That boy ain't got the brains to blow his nose without getting his feet wet. Felonius is the fella in charge. The lackey. The guy who carried his boss piggyback all the way back to the resort. Well, now, don't let his bow and scrape routine fool you. Tiberius may wear the crown, but uh, Felonius has his scepter and orbs in a twist, if you catch my meaning. Am I being too subtle? Wait, wait, wait. I don't get it. Scepter and orbs? explain it to you later, honey. Well, I think we've given the crew of the Nine quite long enough to discuss their plan. Hang on. I, I still don't get what the frog has to do with it. Oh, uh, he sake. The frog. The frog is the center of the whole idea. 
Okay, maybe not. Uh, it's okay, Dr. Theo. I've got it. Greg, I want Lenny back safe and in one poisonous piece. Got it? Uh, yes, ma'am, Captain Jesse. I thought Colin would deliver the message. Why do we need Lenny? Wow. Dr. Theo, how about I take a whack at explaining it? Oh, sure, Captain Madeline. Be my guest. Oh. <laughs> Is that an invitation to your home when we return to Earth? What? No. No. Now get on with it. Fine. Leet, we're using the frog because Dr. Theo thinks it's a good idea and he's much smarter than you are. Okay? That's your explanation? Oh, got it. Uh, plants communicate through pollinators, so we take Linny back to the mold, let her snuggle a while, then when Linny is good and covered in mold spores, we get her to jump on the bad plant. That'll tell the baddie that we have killer mold on board, and it'll be afraid of us. And he sticks the landing. I can't believe that worked. I'm still not sure how we separate the plants, though, to get the baddie on its own. Bait. <laughs> I like where this is going. Well, it's not me, is it? No, it's me. Sorry, Colin, but once the frog... Lenny. Really? Ah, I'm starting to understand why the original me is so keen on taking you out. Now, once we've got the plant's attention, thanks to Linny, we need to get it moving. The plant can move on its own, correct? From what Julie and crew experienced down on Earth, yes, they can move on their own and fast. Colin stands in the doorway, shooting off rainbows or... Misting pheromones, or whatever it is he does. My god, that sounds positively obscene. Own it, plant man. Once the plant catches his scent, Colin, you head for the Dolce and Gabbana wing. We know it's empty. Not my fault. Yes, thank you. And we can trap it in there. Colin, you run in, it follows, and we... And we shut the door behind it. Yes! Oh. That's how it works, is it? Sounds great. Uh, but how do we get Linny back? Yes, let's hear how you plan to get the frog back. Mm -hmm. I'll stand just outside the door to the D&J wing and call her as the plant dashes in. Just make sure I have her before you shut the door. This is going to work. All right, let's saddle up. If I might, just raise one tiny objection. Point out the merest wrinkle in this otherwise... Flawless plan. Quickly, please. Where am I? Well, the floating bucket is right here, so I'm guessing somewhere here. -ish. Ouch! Yes, that's very helpful. No, where am I once the plant is safely confined in the D and G wing? You're with us. Am I? It seems I ran into the D&G wing with the creature hot on my heels. The door was shut. Linny was saved. Hurrah! But I am inside with the plot! Oh, yeah. <laughs> eh, we'll figure it out when we get there. Let's go, crew. Hop, hop, hop. Figure it out when we get there! Are you ready? Let's, yeah. go. Let's do the single file. As the crew races off to lure the other to the Dolce & Gabbana wing, they fail to realize that Greg's recent reboot has reset his internal systems, including the kidney phone. However, like most software, the reboot didn't happen at a convenient time, like when he restarted in the cave. No, it happened in the middle of important things and quietly disrupted everything, like reboots always do. With the ringer now reset to the default silent mode, Greg mistakes the vibration as nothing more than the natural effect of galloping with the albatross kicking him in the sides in her haste and excitement. Back on Earth, in a small quiet hotel on the edge of town. Damn it! No one's answering! Is it, mm? <clears throat> is it so terribly important? Mm. I what exactly have you discovered? <sighs> I'm worried they might try to communicate with the plants they have on board. If I'm right, that's about the worst thing they could do. Really? They have so many bad options to choose from. Well, 
makes this one especially terrible. Look at the clippings. <clears throat> How nuts they are. I caught a housefly and dipped it in the mold and then threw it into the clippings and they went into a frenzy. Ah, oh, good lord. Julie, oh, Julie, where's your duvet? They ate it. <clears throat> and a pillow. Wait, <clears throat> that's... That's impossible. They're tiny, weeny little bastards. Don't look in the bathtub. I'll take care of the bathtub foliage in the morning. Now zip it and let me sleep. Yeah, shut up. I'm trying to sleep here. So, question for you, our listening audience. If you're a killer plant, would you go after the vegetarians first? Because if so, I'm going to go have a cheeseburger. Then I'm going to go apologize to the broccoli in my refrigerator and set it free. Oh, having seen what these plants do when angry, I suggest you do the same. You've been listening to Erie Alexander as Julie, Sarah Golding as Mrs. Sheffield, David S. Deer as Dr. Theo Brome, Bonnie Brantley as Jesse and Donna, Richard Cowan as Leet, June Clark Eubanks as the Albatross and Glenda, Tim Sherburn as Colin and Buck, Eric Perry as Dr. Von Habesetzer, Joe and Mr. Southers, Aaron Clark as Labishan Frise and Ben, Kevin Hall as Greg, Shannon Perry as Madeline and Olivia, and me, Richard Nadolny, as your narrator. Our music is composed and performed by John Faley. Our artwork is by Lucas Elliott. This episode was directed by June Clark Eubanks. Oz 9 is written and produced by Shannon Perry. Until next time, Space Monkeys, and I really, really hope there's a next time. Narrator out. <laughs> <laughs>